Hey everybody, this is Kimball with Live Oak Education. Right now, as you can see, we are not in the Acorn Land Lab. About two years ago, this whole area was a woodland and it was clear cut and then the subdivision was dropped in. This was towards the middle to end of COVID um, when we were experiencing the 2020, 2021 years. But um, today's takeaway episode is actually on shelter, zoning, and suburbia. So it's no surprise to anyone watching that housing costs are out of control. Housing costs have gone through the roof. This subdivision got me excited when I saw it being built. More housing in the county, more options for people to purchase. The for sale signs went up after the subdivision was built and the starting prices were mid 200 thousands. And then overnight, the for sale signs went away. The entire subdivision was purchased by an investment group. Every single home in the subdivision is a rental with rental costs starting at $2,000 a month. That's a lot more than most people's mortgages. That shows where housing is going in America. Institutional landlords are buying up whole neighborhoods if they can. I know as a millennial, many Gen Zs, many millennials, many people want to own their own place, their own home. No one here got the chance after the investors bought up the entire neighborhood. And if you look around, look at the neighborhood. You don't see any big trees. They clear cut it. This neighborhood was designed for one specific primary purpose, shareholder return, profits from the developer or the owners. The neighborhood hasn't been designed to be pedestrian friendly. There are not shops you can walk to from here. These homes are not designed to be energy efficient. They're not designed to be affordable. They're designed to be profitable for the developer and for the institutional owner. If we're going to make meaningful strides towards quality of life improvements, towards young people owning their own homes, we've got to break out of this suburban design paradigm. Suburbia splits everything away. Your retail center is way over here. Your homes are way over here. Your farms are hundreds if not thousands of miles away. You can't walk around. You have to have a car to buy into this way of living. You absolutely have to have a car. There's no way around it. Just the paving for many communities can't be sustained and paid for by the community in the long haul. Not Just Bikes, the YouTube channel Not Just Bikes and the Strong Town series has a phenomenal set of videos showing you how suburbia is fundamentally financially insolvent. You can only continue to pay for more infrastructure, road work, water, extensions as you build farther and farther out if the county is growing. And this county is still growing, so it has the illusion of prosperity but this county that I'm currently in is a billion dollars behind in road work. The county budget's $300 million a year. If we're a billion dollars behind in road work and we're still growing, can you imagine how rough this is going to be when the county's no longer getting a bigger tax base when new subdivisions are no longer being built? $428,000 is the median home price in 2022. $344,000 is the average home price in America currently. If young people are only looking at this model for their future, that's not a lot to be excited about. Paying $2,000 plus a month in rent, you're not building equity. That's been the vehicle for the traditional middle class to build wealth here in America. So we've got more institutional investors purchasing up middle class homes and subdivisions. We've got an environment that's not energy efficient. The utilities are gonna be high in many of these homes. These homes aren't built to last more than 30 or 40 years. They're builder grade materials. There's nothing innovative and fresh here. They do meet the building codes. They will be reasonably safe places to live, but you can't walk to your local grocery store. You can't install a methane digester. Many communities like this have HOAs that prevent you from doing anything unique with solar, gardens, methane digesters. We have absolutely got to build a new blueprint with land labs and concepts like the Acorn Land Lab to show young people how there is a future for affordable living that is sustainable and more enjoyable. There are no big trees here left providing shade cover for these homes. These trees won't be mature for decades and decades. I'm not trying to knock this place beyond what is reasonable. I'm simply trying to show people this suburban model is not going to be sustainable. It's not sustainable today. The infrastructure costs are high and they can't be maintained by this tax base for the long haul. These homes were built for corporate profits not for the health of the people living in them, not for the affordability of the people living in them, not for the energy efficiency or sustainability. The homes were built for profits and they're built for cars. 
They're not built for human well-being. And that's something we have to fix. We have to look at what other home alternatives are there. So let's get back to the Acorn Land Lab. Let's take a look at what the future could or should look like in terms of allowing more creativity with zoning and government regulations for affordable, sustainable housing for Gen Z and millennials. All right, I'll see you at the Acorn Land Lab. You saw what it looks like to live in a neighborhood that's maximized for profit. This is what we think the future should look like. The tiny house movement is, it's not exactly a spring chicken. I'm sure you've heard about tiny houses. This is our tiny house that's in progress. So we're not quite finished with it. Once we are, we'll give you a tour. But this is a tiny house on wheels. It's 178 square feet. And we know this is only going to be address the living needs of a specific group of people. Single people, maybe a couple. If you've got kids like I do, you're not gonna live in one of these. That's just a reality. Now, that said, I'm sure there are some of you out there that either are living in a tiny house with kids and making it work, or plan to. And if you can do it, that is awesome. But I realize many people won't live in a structure this small with kiddos. But after being in the, the developed subdivision we were just in to see what a suburbia for rental subdivision maximized for profit looks like, I just wanna give you all a vision for what we see the future of sustainable, affordable housing being for young Americans, old Americans, people across the globe. Tiny houses on wheels are a great option, but they need to be made legal in cities and communities all across the nation. We shouldn't have to put them on a trailer as a loophole. Prefab homes, small cabins that have a small square footage, mobile homes that are built better to be more modular, more durable, and to be able to actually retain more of their value. A Wafati, which is like an earth ship. Look up the Paul Wheaton Wafati house. Wafatis are, they look like a hobbit hole basically, but they're thermally insulated and require very little energy for heating and cooling. Canvas tents and yurts. The 20K house. There's a studio in Auburn called the Rural Studio and they've designed a house and a few years ago, they added up the costs and it's a $20,000 house to build made out of sheet metal with a cantilever design. So we've got all these creative housing options and concepts. The tiny house here in the Acorn Land Lab is on a quarter acre lot here in a historic downtown. It's got the gardens, the methane digester, the solar panels. We're capturing rainwater on site. This little land lab is its own water plant, a power plant, a farm, shelter, all combined on a quarter acre. Last summer, we grew over a thousand pounds of food here. The chickens produced over 800 eggs. The tiny house is enough room for one or two people. This type of format should not only be legal, it should be encouraged, whether it's a tiny house, a yurt, an earth ship, a wafati. I am convinced that as more of Generation Z and millennials make a voice saying, we want these options, communities have to listen. Eventually, it will be millennials in Generation Z sitting on county commissions, sitting on city councils. These laws do need to change. We need more room for creativity in affordable, sustainable structures to live in and call home. We don't all want to live in a McMansion in the suburbs. Many of us don't want to live in the suburbs at all. We want to go back to more of a walkable format where you've got mixture of local food, local energy systems, local creative shelter, all combined in a vibrant mixture that's walkable and far more sustainable, green and enjoyable. Thanks for tuning in.